that is coming. And when that comes, our dimension will no longer qualify us for the reality that we're about to move into. I, I said something right there that to me was so profound. I had to stop in writing my notes and just have a sea law moment and think about that for a minute. Okay, let me say it. Let me say it one more time. Let me say it one more time. My dimension prepares me for where I am, but for me to move into the next level of life, the dimension I'm leaving may not necessarily be able to go with me. I mean, I'm, what I've learned there is going to go with me. Okay. In other words, Maddie, if you're now in, in college and you're a freshman in college, you may be at the lowest level of the college students, but you're still higher than everybody else K through 12. So when you go to college, don't act like you're still in high school. Are right, you understand that? So what that means is now that we've moved into an, a, a, a fuller understanding of Christ, don't get into the classroom a fuller maturity and act like you're still back here in grammar school. Okay. Right. Act to age, is that what you say? Act to age. And be prepared for the, for the territory you're about to be exposed to. All right. So uh, what I find interesting in Revelation 14 is that this is a this whole chapter has been about harvest and harvest and maturity. The Greek words go side by side. Okay. Now, what would have we read anything in this 14th chapter already that says anything about harvest? Now, let me ask you to think about this for a minute. Have we read anything in this chapter? That, that's talked about harvest, or are we just jumping into harvest in verse 14? Has there been anything said so far that has any type of language of harvest in anything we've read? Can anybody reflect and think about it? As you're quickly reading through the first 14 verses of chapter 4, 14. Anyone? Somebody go to verse 4. The 144,000 are what? They're all for this first fruits. What is first fruit? First fruit is a harvest term. What I want you to see is verse 14 is not the first fruit harvest. That's already been established in 144,000. This is the harvest of the earth. Now, I don't know what that says to you. I, mean, I, I don't know if that kind of just kind of registers and says, I, I think that might mean something, but I don't really know what it means. To me, I'm like, my gosh, how come nobody's ever taught that to me? How come nobody's ever brought that out? The first fruit harvest is what brings you into the understanding of the seed. You're the first fruit. That's the first initial movement. You were brought out of Adam and you were brought into Christ. You came out of darkness, you came into light. I don't care how you want to say it. You came out of sin and you came into righteousness. You once was lost, but now you're found. You were once blind, now you see. However you want to say it. First fruit brought you in. The harvest of the earth is not what brought you in. It's what's called to come into your life to move you to the next level of your Christian experience. So I want to go to church with folks that are wanting to press in to the next great thing in God that there is. Not those who just settle for what they know and what they've experienced and live the rest of their life there. So uh, I talked to Dr. Beecham yesterday and he says, well, what, what, how can I help you? I said, Pastor. I said, Dr. Bishop, Dr. Beecham. I said, man, I feel like I'm in a rut. I feel like I've, I've, re I've, re I've reached the ceiling in my life. I just feel like I'm, I'm not productive. I'm not, I'm not, man, I'm just, I just, I just feel like, I mean, it's my crying the blues to him and, and you know, the first thing he said was, you know, let me pray for you, or let me rebuke that spirit of, you know, discouragement. He didn't, you know what he said? He said, man, I'm so proud to hear you say that. And I thought, really? I thought, well, I'm not real proud to say it. Why? He says, because you know how many pastors, he said, I talked to that are in that place and they refuse to deal with it? He said, I appreciate the fact that you recognize it because we can't change it until you recognize it. And I said, all of a sudden, my whole, my whole forecast for tomorrow changed from partly cloudy to partly sunny. It did. It encouraged me. All of a sudden, I thought, hey, hey, I, listen, I'm on my road to success. 
Why? Because with the help of some godly men, I'm learning that the first, well, you know this, you can't change an addiction in your life until you first acknowledge you have one. Aren't they teaching us that? Don't they teach you? I've never been to any AA or whatever the meetings are, but I know guys that I play, good friend of mine, I play golf with. He attends an AA, I think it's called AA meeting, a couple times a week, and he always helps me. He says, you know, the first step to recovery is, is, is realizing you need to be recovered. I said, hey, I preach that every week. I said, man, you can't, you can't experience life in Christ until there's a need for him. Unless you understand there's a need for him. Oh, no, let me say that a different way. You'll never go eat it unless you get hungry. So it's got to be a hunger that moves you towards, okay? And so here, here 